friends. Thank you for being here with me today. I received a question and I thought to jump on here and answer that question because it's a fun question. So for some of you may not have already seen, but I've released a program called The Remembrance. It's a one-on-one -on -one experience, really works through the heart-centered facilitator program, which was created by Danielle Laporte. I weave in my own magic along with her exercises and practices and philosophies as shared in the Heart Centered Facilitators program. The question was, what are three of my favorite practices that I do with my clients? And I couldn't really narrow it down to three. It's kind of like picking your favorite child. <laughs> so I've narrowed it down to four and I wanted to explain what they are and why I love them. To begin with, if you're new here to my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell so that you're notified of any new episodes as I drop them. And everything that I speak about throughout today's session, all the links will be down in the comments section below. If you've got any questions about them, you can either pop your comments in the comment section or feel free to reach out to me via my website. The first of my favorite exercises and practices is called the Love and Radiance Meditation. Now I have been practicing this meditation myself for many years. I have such fond memories of practicing it from when I was still living in Melbourne, which was quite a few years ago. What I really love about it is that it supports the person who's doing the meditation with parts integration. So if you're struggling with a part of yourself with thoughts, behaviors, choices, patterns that you just can't seem to shift, this meditation really supports you to do so. I myself have seen great shifts over an extended period of time, of course. I've also sent this a meditation to clients of mine and ask them to practice this and it works in the subtlest of ways so you're visualizing and you don't really need to know what's happening as long as you stay present and in the meditation then the energy alchemy that occurs throughout that time period will just do its magic there's a light version and a deeper version that you can go through so dependent on how much time you have you can select whichever one that you want to go through, which is really helpful for clients of mine that you know are really busy or perhaps they have short periods of time during the week and would like to indulge in the longer practices over the weekend. So I have found that to be one of the most beautiful practices. If you're experiencing any sorts of fragmentation where there is a part of you that feels really triggered or you strongly identify with parts of your woundedness, victim mentality, go into childish behaviors, even though you know that it's not the right thing to do, but you just can't stop yourself. This meditation series is really beautiful and it forms part of the divine love virtue that I work with my clients through in the remembrance. So generally it's the first virtue that we work through, although there are times where we go through other virtues first, but I just find divine love is the center point of all the other virtues. So if you can really hone in on understanding what divine love is and getting to the crux of how you can embody the essence, the virtue of divine love, then you can move from that place as we move through the rest of the virtues. So with that being said, my second favorite exercise or practice as part of the remembrance is got them all written down here, is the Shavasana relaxation practice. I'm a yogi at heart. I've been practicing yoga for decades now, and Shavasana is the most challenging practice. It's the most challenging pose because you're asked to lie down in a state of complete surrender. And even though at the beginning of my yoga practice, when I first started practicing, I used to find this really challenging. Now I'm so excited when the teacher or the instructor says it's Shavasana time. I use this practice particularly with clients when they're feeling burnt out, 
when they have health issues, nervous system challenges, when they need clarity on something in their life, when they need rest, rejuvenation, or when they're having trouble sleeping. The most exquisite Shavasana practice. So I'll send that across to them. My third favorite, holding polarization. This is an exercise that I have been doing a lot of with my clients, especially in the times that we now live in. This is specifically for those who have trouble understanding the perspective of others. Think family dynamics, think two people in a family who have completely opposing views on a subject. Think a little bit out from the family unit, culturally, two cultures in the world fighting over their opinions on a thing. There's so much of this polarization that's happened in our world lately. Obvious example of this is whether you've been vaccinated or not. This is such a polarizing discussion in some families, in some cultures, in some countries. And so I have found this exercise to be so incredibly helpful when working with a client to help them move into a state of non-judgment, serenity, having compassion for the other, even if they don't agree. And it's not about agreeing to disagree. It's about coming to a place where you have empathy for the person and you allow them to hold a different perspective. So that's a whole beautiful exercise that I go through with my clients. It's life-changing. In fact, I've had a lot of my clients that have gone through this practice who have revitalized their relationships, who have completely turned a corner when it comes to having these polarizing discussions within their families. It doesn't necessarily turn into an argument, although things can get heated and you can have an opinion, but it doesn't turn into a fight. It doesn't turn into uh, not speaking to one another for months or years. It really is the sense of respect and trust and faith in the greater picture. So, so good. And then my fourth favorite, I couldn't leave this one out, it's left nostril breathing. I have a pranayama seven day program that is gifted to all participants of the remembrance because breath work is one of the quickest ways to reestablish balance and harmony within the systems of the body. It helps with the nervous system, uh, lymphatic system, immune system, digestive system. It is one of the most profound practices that you can ever embark on. It takes consistency. So showing up as often as you can on your mat, your pillow, your bed to practice this breathwork. And it's a very basic seven day sequence that's been backed to chakra sounds, basically helping you to harmonize the energies within your body. As part of that program, which you receive as part of the remembrance, left nostril breathing is in there. We call this Chandra Vedana in Sanskrit. And I use this breathwork practice, particularly for those people who are experiencing anxiety or a lack of calmness. For those who want to wind down at the end of the day, who want to sleep better, who want to better navigate emotional responses, desire more concentration or alertness, need to stay centered and present, want a regular, simple meditative action that can bring them more ease or presence, and anyone who's looking to just be more receptive. This is a very cooling breath. It draws on the yin energies in the body, which are nurturing, softening, present, all encompassing. It feels like a huge hug from someone that you love dearly. And so that's it. Those are my four favorite practices. It took a while for me to decide because this suite of practices are so incredibly beautiful and it does depend on what the client's going through that I'll pick the practices. But these four are the ones that I generally suggest the most 
to my clients because they can have a profound effect on the nervous system and the way that we experience the world. But of course, each one of the virtues that we go through has its own suite of practices. These are only four of the many that we choose from, depending on what you're going through. There's seven virtues and so seven beautiful tools that I share with my students as we go through this program together. If anything that I've said has sung out to you and you feel it in your heart, that leaning in, please check out the page, The Remembrance, which is linked down below. And if you've got any questions, feel free to reach out to me either via my website or at Ariana Pinna on Instagram. I can't wait to speak with you soon. Bye for now.